my name is Randy Zerger, and I'll be teaching you today about the evolution of canines or the genetics of canine morphology. Does anyone know specifically what morphology may mean or what canines specifically evolved from? It is uh, morphology. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Morphology. Um, like how you get like different dog breeds, like and they have certain traits. Yeah, that's how it came for dogs specifically. Like morphology, it comes like I use the word morphed a lot. So like they morphed into something else. Like they evolved. Like they started out as a wolf or like a prehistoric dog, and then that turned into a wolf. And then today, that's how we got our um, such phenotypic different, such extreme phenotypic differences that we see today. So yeah, they kind of just morphed into a dog rather than a wolf. So yeah. The very first is about ancient origins of the domestic dog. That is the very first thing that I studied for this project. And there's a big influence of dogs in the Middle East and Europe. And archeologists, they found many remains in many different areas. Like they found evidence in Eastern China that dated back 16,000 years. And they were also found in um, burials in Germany dating back 14,000 years ago. Their first finding was in Illinois in the, in the North in North America, and that was 8,500 years ago, years that they dated back to. And right here's the canines. They were domesticated well before any other animal species. And this came along at the beginning of agriculture when cats and other animals, other livestock animals were being domesticated. And um, Romans, those were like the very first people to make dog breeds like it's very evident because many of their paintings from Rome have different uh, dog breeds such as the greyhound or the mastiffs or any, those kind of dogs so that was very prominent that was one of the major findings this picture over here is called the five pounds in a landscape this was in 1762 but the first um, evidence that they found that they made paintings for these dog breeds were in the first century AD so quite um, for 1762 and yeah, domestic dogs have existed across all three continents uh, by 10,000 years ago. The gray wolf is the most, they are the ancestor of dogs. That is the main ancestor. They may branch off and be related toward like foxes and jackals and um, animals like that, but this, the gray wolf is their ancestor. And so many scientists, they did uh, many experiments with mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomes. So if you didn't know, mitochondrial DNA is inherited from the mother, and Y chromosomes are inherited by the father, and then autosomal microsatellite markers are inherited from both parents. And what they did with this experiment was they took the mitochondrial DNA from 162 wolves at 27 different lo locations worldwide, and wolves, they first started over in Asia, and that's where it all started, basically. And then they compared that mitochondrial DNA to the 140 domestic dogs representing 67 different breeds. So they had several different breeds. And then the, their analysis concluded that they are the definite ancestor of dogs. And there are many stories and legends about like, how wolves became tame enough to breed to like um, dogs, I guess. There's one uh, good story about how wolves were domesticated from the prehistoric people. And what they did was they took um, wolf pups out of their den and they um, brought them back to their village and they raised them like like the people were their pack. And so they became tame enough and then that's kind of where artificial selection came into play. And that's, they breeded like dogs or wolves that had a better um, body bodily structure, better colors. Like today we want to breed like the pretty dogs rather than the uglier ones. And that's what they did. Um, years ago, and that's how they became tame and more dog-like. Um, there's another theory that um, they domesticated themselves, like many um, hunter-gatherer type villages way back in the prehistoric ages. They left food scraps right outside their village, and so the braver wolves, they came along and they took those uh, food scraps. They, that may not seem like a lot, but you know, wolves, they were afraid of people. They didn't want to come near them. And so when they came that close to villages, they became like more tolerant towards humans. And then they kind of relied on these food scraps. Even though they hunted elk and deer and other big game, they started to rely on that. And the wolves that were more outgoing and decided to go for these food scraps, they, they became smaller after um, these ages. And so this is when um, it became more 
efficient to be as smaller than larger because they didn't need as much food. So they started um, relying more on the humans to give them food. And then um, they say that dogs have split with wolves about 100,000 years ago. So canids and prehistoric dogs. So dogs go back you know, millions and millions of years. And you can see from this tree right here uh, that they come from eating meat-eating animals, obviously. And the first carnivorous mammals, they came about, um, let's see, 55 million years ago. And then after that, there was like a weasel-like creature that came after the first carnivorous mammal. And it was that, that's what turned to the leptocyon, which is the very first true canine. Carnivorous mammals are called the canids, and that's specifically what they are. So canine canids, they look, they look similar. And then the canids are part of the Canidae family, which spans about 50 million years ago. And then that's part of like the super family called the Canoidae, which that means they are related to bears, skunks, weasels, seals, sea lions, all those different types of animals. And then, yeah, so here's the tree right here. So from meeting animals, it goes down to Canidae, and then to the fox-like animals, to the South American canids, and then to the wolves. And then so jackals and the coyotes are wolf-like, but they're not wolves, and then straight from the wolves came the dogs, the domestic dog. So like I said, the first true canid was the leptocyon, and there's a picture right there. To me, it kind of looks like a German Shepherd type thing, more wolf-like than a German Shepherd today. And then the Eusion kind of looks more like a Siberian Husky wolf-like dog. Okay, so natural and artificial selection. Natural selection is pretty much evolution that plays out naturally. Like there's no interference from humans or any other outside force. So let's say that there's an animal with a really bright coat, but it's really shy. So it's unable to hide. And that means that those animals are going to most likely die off faster than they would if they had a more um, camouflaged coat rather than really bright. And so that trait would be eliminated. And But animals that have beneficial qualities in nature, they will most likely survive. And then like, survival of the fittest, basically. In artificial selection, that's when people choose to breed the animals that they want. So like today, we choose to breed like purebred dogs rather than mixed breeds. It's like our choice and we fiddle with the evolution. Um, one example is a Russian scientist. He did an experiment on a fox farm in the 1950s. And what he wanted to do is he wanted to make foxes more tolerant towards humans. So what he did was he bred those tolerant foxes with each other. And over many generations, they started to become, become more dog-like. They started to get like floppy ears, curly tails started to bark more, get in heat more often. So they became more dog-like. So what, they, what his prediction was, was that when you breed less suspicious animals with each other, then it affects um, largely their um, developmental process. The ancient breeds. So all the DNA testing that the scientists have done over um, these last generations, they have discovered that all dog, all dog breeds today relate back to these 14 ancient breeds. There's a few other theories that later on I'll talk about, like the founding females, but this one is the has the most evidence from the DNA research. So the 14 ancient breeds are the Chow Chow, Sharpe, the Akita, Shiba Inu, the Basenji. Siberian Husky, Alaskan Malamu, the Afghan Hound, Walasa, Opso, Pekingese, Soliki, Samoya, Shih Tzu, and the Tibetan Terrier. And the top seven right here, these have like the very, the most odd genetic patterns. These ones are just the basic um, breeds. Like some of these may look alike, like Siberian Husky and Alaskan Malamu, except Alaskan Malamu is a lot larger, it looks more wolf-like rather than Siberian Husky. And then there's what I was surprised about with these dogs is some of these are small dogs. So the Pekingese, Lost Opso, and Shih Tzu, I think the Tibetan Terrier, those are all really small dogs. Yeah. And so here's another tree right here. So it stems from the wolf and then it goes down towards these. You can see that the Sharpe, Shiba Inu, these top seven that I talk about with the oddest uh, genetic patterns are all on top. Then they branch down to these other breeds.